Are you really solving lead code problems correctly or making the same mistake as everyone else? In this video, I am going to show you how to solve lead code problems the right way. How to stay consistent and most importantly, how to find time for lead code in your daily schedule and also share some resources. I am Sriyans or your Bhadra. I have solved more than 300 questions, so I am pretty qualified for this, right? Let's begin. I am going to give you 5 simple steps to follow and if you stick to them, you will be just like me. Oh, wait, never mind. You will be like him, Ma Lin. Don't know him? He is an Olympic table tennis champion and also a lead code legend who has solved over 3000 problems. And me? Let's get started. First, create an account on lead code. Yeah, I know there is a lot to cover. But before diving into the topic, let me answer something people often say. There is no use of DSA in development. Really? Are you sure? Okay, imagine this. You are working on a food delivery app like Swiggy or Zomato. One day, your manager says, Hey, the app gets slower when the user search for restaurants. Can you fix it? If you have participated lead code or solve any lead code problems, your brain instantly thinks, Hmm, if we store restaurant names randomly, the search will be big O of N. Not good. But if we store the name in sorted order, we can use binary search and bring it down to big O of log N, which is much better. See, this kind of thinking comes naturally when you solve DSA problem regularly. If you have this kind of thinking, then you don't need to solve any DSA problem. And if you still don't understand the importance of DSA, just remember this. If you do it, companies are more likely to hire you. So yeah, let's begin the journey. If you starting with the problem solving on lead code, hold on. Don't jump in without checking these important boxes. First, decide which programming language you want to use. I am pretty sure many of you already chosen one. If not, I recommend C++. And here's why. It has a tons of resources available at YouTube. It is great for competitive programming. Many DSA sheets and tutorials are based on it. So yeah, C++ is a solid choice. But wait, don't jump directly into lead code yet. Make sure you are comfortable with C++ syntax first. You can learn the basics from W3 schools. Go through each topic, read carefully and don't forget to try exercises at the end of each section. Once you have got syntax down or if you already know C++, you are ready to move forward. Still, don't start solving lead code randomly. Lead code has over 3000 plus problems. Even if you solve two problems a day, it would take you more than five years to finish them all and cover all the topics. That's why you need a DSA roadmap or sheet to follow. I highly recommend Stryver's A to Z DSA sheet. It is well structured covers every topic in a proper order, comes with a video explanation. Honestly, I am also following this and it's a complete course on DSA. Once you have completed a topic, then go to lead code. For example, you have finished priority queue. Solve related problems starting from easy to medium to hard. Now you know how to navigate to the lead code and select problems. Let's move to the next step, which is how to approach a problem. I have seen many people, including myself, making this mistake. Open the problem, read the statement and immediately start coding and then stuck after initializing few variables. When I first started problem solving, I did not even understand the question properly. I used to read it with full concentration and I'm still confused. At first, I thought maybe I was just bad at English. But no, that's not the issue. The real problem was, I did not know how to break down the questions properly. So here is the step-by-step -step approach you should follow to break a problem. Does not matter which platform you are using, lead code, code forces or GFG. The process stays the same. Step 1. Look at the problem number and name. Sometimes the name gives you a small hint. For example, two sum. You might just think it's just about adding two numbers. But nope, it's a little trickier than that. Step 2. Understand the problem statement. This part tells you exactly what the question is asking. If you clearly understand this, congratulations, you have solved 50% of the problem. The rest 50% is just writing code with correct syntax and logic. Write down the question in your own word on paper. For example, in sum, we are given an array called nums and integer called target. We have to return two indexes i and j such that nums i plus nums j is equal to target. Also, we can't use the same element twice and there is exactly one solution. So we can get this information from the problem statement and we can write this in a paper for better understanding. Step 3. Look at the examples. Let's check an example from the problem. Input nums is 2, 7, 11 and 15 and the target is 9. So if we will take the position 0 and position 1 and take both the element at that position which is 2 and 7 and we add them which sum is equal to 9 which is our target. So yeah, we are thinking on the right way. 
Step 4. Read the constraints. Constraints are super helpful. They tell you how large the input can be, which help you decide the time complexity of your solution. If you don't know the time complexity, then in simple words, it is the time taken by your program. For two sum, the constraint is from 1 to 10 raised to 4. That means the array can have up to 10,000 elements. So an big O of n square solution might still work. Step 5. Come up with an approach. First, try the brute force solution. That is the most straightforward idea that comes in your mind. Run a loop for every element. Inside that, run another loop to check every another element. If there sum equals the target, return the indexes. It works but its time complexity will be big O of n square which is very slow. So now we optimize the solution. That's how you grow in DSA. First try the brute force then try to reduce the time complexity. And trust me, if you follow this approach, you gonna solve most of the DSA problem. If you are starting with the problem solving, then 80% of the time you will face this issue not being able to solve the problem. If you don't know the answer, don't be the person who just copy and paste the solution and then tries to understand it. I am not saying copying is wrong, but pasting without thinking is wrong. Instead, you can look at the solution, understand the approach and then try to write the code manually. This will definitely help you to make progress. Now suppose you try to understand the solution, but it just goes over your head. I have a solution for that too. Something I also do when I can't figure it out on myself. Just search on YouTube. Some random Indian guy will surely help to clear your doubt. You can also check out code with me for daily lead code problems. He explained them really well. And for those who prefer English, check out needcode.io. Now you know how to solve and what to do if you don't know the answer. Now let's see how to submit and what to do after submitting. These are some extra things, but this only makes you different from others. So this step is also important. I had the very bad habit of directly submitting the file without checking does all things is right or not. And this causes wrong submission many times, which is a very bad thing. If you are participating in any contest, then you can lose points. If you are giving any interviews, then it's also gonna lower your impressions. Don't directly just submit it. After writing your code, you should check your code for any syntax error. Then don't submit it. Try running the test cases and then if it passes, then submit it finally. After submitting, the lead code provides you the time complexity of your program. But you might already know, so it is not used for us. But good for checking. Now the most important step that I have to also work on. After submitting, we should do two things. But we mainly do the first one which is to celebrate. But we don't do the other thing which is to analyze the other's code. That what technique they have used, what you have missed. We can learn from that and can give us a whole new way of looking that problem solution. And that learning we can use in next problems. Being consistent is the biggest obstacle when it comes to problem solving. But let me tell you how I managed to overcome it. In my life, I have mainly two days, college life or holidays. You might think I struggle to solve problems on college days. But actually, it is opposite. I struggle more during holidays. On college days, I usually have 5 to 6 lectures. During one of those lectures, I quickly open my phone and note down the problem statement and examples. In that lecture only, I think about an approach and write a step-by-step -step algorithm. Later at home, I just code it out on my laptop. So this habit helped me stay consistent with the problem solving. And over time, I actually started enjoying it. It slowly became a part of my daily routine. Now even on holidays, I make sure to solve problems. I am not saying to do this, just telling you I do this. Guys, if you start enjoying something, no one can stop you. So these were some tips from my side. If you follow them, I am sure you will go way beyond just solving 100 problems. If you get help from this video, then please consider like to the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And if you also don't know about the student developer program, you can watch this video.